everybody. This is Interesting Times. I'm Matt Moses, and I am here with Gideon Evans. So we are here, and we're going to be talking about uh, the Trump jury selection, which uh, they, I think just uh, as we are recording this, have settled on a jury and alternates and are going yep. to be starting the trial on uh, Monday the 22nd, I guess, yeah? Which I think they the want... This is coming out. They wanted to get a jury before sundown, before Shabbat, I think. I'm just is kidding. That, is, is that... I mean... No, I, I no. <laughs> it is New I, York. It is New York. That wouldn't surprise me. I, I I wonder if they consider that, for, especially for the holiday. But I guess the holiday isn't until... Uh, what? Until... Oh, that's next week. It's, it's coming no, soon, though. It's, it's, I think it is Monday. The or Monday, Monday night. Is, okay, yeah. Right, right. Maybe, is that the first night? I don't know. I am not a good crew. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there are, there are uh, seven nights of Passover. I'm sorry, or 12 nights of Passover. 12 nights. Eight nights 12, of Passover. Eight crazy nights. Um, yeah. That was a great Adam Sandler movie, by the way. I um, never saw um, it. Is that really good? Um, no. No. But I enjoy it. No. Actually, you know what? I, I watched it and I enjoyed it many years ago. I should find it because, uh, you know, I'm constantly looking for decent kids movies now. And there's not that much Hanukkah in pop culture. Let's face it. It pales in comparison to Christmas. Um. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe there that's, should be more. That's not controversial, I don't think, to say that. Oh, I don't think so. No. No. I mean, Jews love Christmas as well, right? I mean, they you're do. way more Jewish than me, so that's that's. And when I'm... you live in New York, you celebrate Christmas too, and Kwanzaa. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's become such a secular holiday. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, you know what I wanted to tell you that interesting happened to me recently. I live in LA. You're in Brooklyn, and uh, I was, and we're both native Brooklynites. And I was blown away recently. I had a good, very good bagel out here for the first wow. time ever. And, you know, I think I've been living here about eight years. Never. Uh, and I've, people have said, oh, you got to try this. They finally have good. And I go and try it. And, and ugh, no. And this was. Well, people say really it's good. the water, that the New York water, that you just can't make one outside of New York. Yeah. So, I where, what's true? You, you want to give a plug to our uh, yeah, viewers? This was, what's. Uh, it's Bell's Bagels. Yeah. And, um, B-E-B-E-L-L-S. Uh, bell, uh, like uh, bell of the ball, B E L L E. Oh. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, and I've heard cool. there are a few other places that are also good. Which now I'm like, okay, maybe I believe it because I had heard this for the last mm, two years, three years or so that that the, that it existed, but I didn't believe. Anyway. And if you get a bagel, if you have your druthers, mm-hmm. what would you get? What do you have on your bagel? What's your favorite bagel fixin' type uh, smear thing? Uh, you know, I was thinking about just going whitefish this time because I, I went through a big whitefish phase. Uh, whitefish salad ago. or whitefish white fish, the fish? Yeah, I yeah, love whitefish white salad. salad. So good. But I didn't do it because I, I was like, my more classic recently is uh, scallion cream cheese, uh, lox, and tomato. I used to love scallion cream cheese and tomato. Yeah, lox, yeah. the classic is lox cream cheese a little red onion and and capers or whatever oh but yeah that's that's, good that's always very good but yeah. yeah i wonder if bell makes has the capers and the uh, red I think, onion i think they do you know they also offer uh full sour pickles which are not the easiest mm. to find i love full sours man yeah my uh, wife wait, likes the half name? salad uh, the, half, the half sour and yeah. i can't I don't, i'm not into that i just can't with the half you know? sour uh, what do you want? You want full? I like the full or the yeah. The full is the way to go. The old the Gus's go. pickles. Yeah. Maybe yeah, we should but... do a food podcast. I know. We, should, we could mix anyway. The, oh, oh! I caught myself saying anyway. I say anyway too much. I really I don't notice. So I I'm um I notice any. Oh, I almost said it again. What am I gonna <laughs> do? I need like electrodes to shock me when I say that. Gideon. <laughs> Uh, well, so a, couple, we should... a couple of episodes. Yeah, we did our Stormy Daniels episode, just kind of going through what this case is about, because it was coming up very soon. And now it just started. 
and there's a circus environment already. If you could call it a circus, it's a really scary circus. Yeah, Someone lit, sure. lit themselves on fire just now on Friday when we're recording this. Yeah, it's just so horrifying. I mean, and I was just, we were speculating a, a, a bit or just wondering aloud what, what the motive behind this was. Uh, and saying at the same time, you know, nobody should ever do this for any cause, really, no matter what. No. Uh, because it, well, because it's lionized. and I, I just, I don't know. I'm not into right. it. But at the same time, I... I I was just thinking, I was like, I, I really hope it is about what's going on in Gaza and not about Trump, you know? Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you're going to light yourself on fire, you wouldn't want it to be about Trump. No, please. Anyway. Uh, well, it could be, though. There have been people that have done some pretty awful things in his name so far. So I would not be surprised, but we'll see. We can't even guess. It could be not. anything. Yeah, I mean that w- it wouldn't it would make more sense for it to be about Trump that, that it's it's there. But there's a lot of media there, I suppose. Right. So. Ugh. so, well, they've been picking jurors all week long, and um, I guess I'm going to play this clip of Jesse Waters from Fox. I, get, I I hate to give him airtime, but he's been really shitty about like sneering at the jurors. They don't they're anonymous supposedly. Yeah. But. But people are finding out stuff about them and how they're they're transcripts, so you can find out how they answer this questionnaire. Yeah. Anyway, oh, I said anyway again. Here's Jesse Waters talking about the jurors. I'll I'll play it and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Let's bring in Susan Constantine, jury consultant and body language expert. Let's look at the foreman. All right, so the foreman's a salesman from Harlem, but he was born in Ireland, didn't finish college, married no kids. Do you think this guy's a defense juror? He's a defense juror. This is a juror that's coming to this country, right? He's looking at this as a land of opportunity. And he's trumpeting everything that he believes in. So when I look at this particular juror and that he is also a middle-class citizen and the type of position that he has is non-authoritarian, I think this is definitely a defense juror and a very strong one. Okay. A salesman is non-authoritarian. Okay. I have met a few (laughs) salesmen that would maybe differ from that. Number two is the nurse. This nurse scares me if I'm Trump. She's from the Upper East Side, master's degree, not married, no kids, lives with her fiance, gets her news from the New York Times and CNN. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. You know, it, was, it, sound, it sounded really good until I heard the CNN part of it and autom- automatically strike, strike right, that one. So you can't strike. All right. And then you got an Asian lawyer. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's a corporate guy. His law firm, you go right on it, says DEI all over it. What do you think about him? No, definitely no, because he's too influential. You get him into the, you get him into deliberations, and he can sway those jurors that are in there. So absolutely no, so not this one. You usually don't like lawyers as jurors. I understand that. Now here's a juror that I like, Puerto Rican, born there, says Trump's fascinating and mysterious, and he has a grandchildren. I mean, that's that's pretty good, right? Yes, and I see this one as a Trump apprentice. This is someone that is really fascinated with Donald Trump. He finds him mysterious, and I think that he's going to be sitting there in awe and wonder just watching, uh, you know, Donald Trump in the jury during the whole jury process. So I think he's definitely a great defense juror. Okay, and it only takes one. So I'll stop it there. I think we've heard enough. Um... (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah that that was an interesting clip yeah thanks for bringing that too i hadn't heard that uh yet i appreciate you bringing it uh, uh yeah it's it's gross and uh, it's scary that uh so many details have been released also c- uh, what was this about dei uh the lawyer was it simply because the lawyer was asian that it screamed dei is that literally what he was saying I mean, it seems like that's what he was saying, unless he kind of dug into the law firm and there's something it's possible. He probably just his his researcher probably looked at the law firm and there happened to be a few people that were not white 
and that they probably... can't have known the law firm though that would be way too many details to be released i think i hope i guess i, I mean I... the the selection process the the whole juror anonym anonymity is that the word yeah you, they're trying know. to make it anonymous where the where the jurors have privacy where they won't get threatened by anybody so they're they're not allowing lawyers to take the names of the jurors outside of the courtroom but they right. are allowing the lawyers to know the names so that they can google them and kind of look them up look at their social media to make sure that there's no red flags but if the lawyers are hearing the names even if you can't bring them outside on a piece of paper you can still remember them and then call Jesse Waters and give Jesse Waters the name. So right. there could be leaking going on. It's There's no perfect way to do this, but a lot of people are criticizing the judge. Yeah. That's an excellent point, because if they want to destroy the current trial, I wonder if they could just release a name or two or something and then there's a real risk uh to these people's safety and they have to say oh there's a mistrial uh, i you know is that a, a tactic that could be used or well if they I, didn't if they didn't give the names then trump could say oh i didn't know the names and then it came out that this guy had all this anti-trump stuff on social media so then they'd call a mistrial because of that so there's no it's a no win situation although i heard what happened recently in the courtroom i guess yesterday was that they're going to start the actual trial on monday and the uh the prosecutors from the da's office usually tell the defense who the first witnesses are that's like kind of customary yeah. but in this case they told the judge they were like we don't feel comfortable giving you those names because all weekend long before they come trump is just gonna like tw you know post on truth social just saying these people are horrible horrible people and that they're biased and it's rigged so the judge was like i can't blame you for not wanting to release those names and then the ju the the lawyer for trump apparently said well what if you just give it to me and not I promise I won't tell my client, but the judge was like, I don't think so. <laughs> so, so this lawyer has no credibility. The trial hasn't even begun. Wow. It's a mess. I mean, it, yeah. it's already a mess. And the judge couldn't just uh, say, Hey, if you do this, uh, you're going to, you know, be in jail for, you know, in held in contempt. And I'm going to put you in, in prison for, I don't know. A day, two days, three days, something. Saying like, that to like, Trump or to the to lawyer? Trump. Like, yeah, like, this is what it is. If you break it, this is what's going to happen. I, it's like, I, I don't know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get to that point. I guess the judge probably feels like, let's not escalate it immediately. Yeah. That, like, let's, let's just have a system where he's not, like, going to jail right now but i'll give warnings and then as the warnings continue to happen uh it'll escalate and eventually the judge will probably have to say you're gonna go to you're gonna go to the jail or whatever the holding pen yeah um I, but I, it's I, bad because even now with trump i mean trump quoted jesse waters in yeah. a post and that broke the gag order and that's it's fucked up because all these crazy manga people um could could really like there's always there's already someone who lit himself on fire and it may have nothing to do with it yeah. but somebody could attack a juror yeah I, well because uh, somebody I, I think it was probably the nurse uh who was revealed to be an oncologist so there were some details about her right and she lived on the upper east side and was single and uh her friends called her and said oh hey we were hearing about this jury are you on the jury because it sounded like 
you, you know, you. Uh, so she they must have came... known she was going to the courthouse. That's true. That's and true. And then, but but it's true that like that information is pretty specific. Yeah. So well, so they she she left. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's like how many, you know, uh, single uh, oncol uh, you know female oncologists uh, nurse on nurse oncologists are there on the Upper East Side? I mean. I'm sure there's more than one, but she like, basically she got doxxed without having her name revealed. Yeah, and she, not, felt, you know, she felt she felt she felt dot she got freaked out. I'm sure. Yeah, well, so she she uh, the judge dismissed her, which but, you know, and that would be an interesting call to me. I was thinking about if I was in a situation like like that where I was concerned about being doxxed, but I was also on this historic trial and super interesting and wanted to be on it. Do you take the risk and stay on it, or do you really try to like, hey, I gotta look out for my safety, the safety of my family. I gotta figure out a way to get off this trial, no matter what, even if you're not the nurse, uh, just because you know the possibility of this happening is strong. What do you think? I think it. I mean, what would I do? Or yeah, what or... would you do? I just think I'd get thrown off no matter what. But if <laughs> if they if they were considering keeping me, I would want to get on it. I would, I'd be yeah. okay at, at my like um, advanced. I mean, I'm not that old, but you're not that old. I think if I was uh, if I was like 21, I might get freaked out about yeah. like how is this gonna affect my career or something. Oh, I feel like now, I'd be more fearless at 21. But, I, I would be. Oh, like, oh because yes. you don't. And also without a family, that's true. That is yeah. like scary. Like, are there going to be MAGA people like hanging out outside right. my house? Like, right. even if to, I like, was like, screw it, I'll die for a democracy, like at this age or something, I, I couldn't uh, do it now because I'd be concerned about uh, the fam, you know? Yeah, that's true. I mean, living in New York is a decent buffer. Probably, although, I mean, they all came to D.C. and that didn't help. So on January right. 6th. Right. Oh, like a buffer in terms of, oh, just you have. All there the aren't around you. tons of magas. I mean, there right. are. I mean, like you said, in your old neighborhood where you grew up in Brooklyn, there were a lot more. Yeah. And oh, even even there. in Staten Island. But do you think the MAGA, I know we're sounding so partisan and we just i just can't help it but do you think uh, the mean, Ma whatever. do you think the maga people in new york are slightly less scary than the maga people in other states this is uh, like a broad a broad brush sort of thing and maybe it's uh, not fair to generalize well okay when we're talking about it too we got to talk about like the extremist maga people like the real you know the five percent of them that are uh dangerous or maybe 10 percent, or maybe 20 right. but you know not uh, of them um so i i think that maybe there would be just as dangerous on their own but are less dangerous because they uh, don't have the community of people riling that's each interesting other up right as strong like they just rile themselves up on uh twitter or whatever and you know maybe you know mutter to their family about it at dinner or something uh, it, you know, or when they're picking up the daily news, like you see this, what they're doing to the guy, but then you know, it, I I don't know. I guess they're not at the range, you know, shooting targets of Biden. Uh, <laughs> Biden, let's go shoot some targets. Biden. You mean br you mean Brandon? Yeah, Brandon. Yeah, I know. It's it's like hard to remember now that that has uh that was originally a Republican thing because. Oh, you know, now he, uh, he, he embraces it. Right. It's right. Dark Brandon, right? So Right, right. Yeah. Well, it's just going to get more of a circus, right? Uh, seemingly. I, well, you know, and honestly, I, I wonder if we should even discuss some of these jurors that are released. I mean, obviously, we're not the, a big news agency, but you have to wonder... Um, uh, what were these news outlets talking, uh, debating with internally about what should they actually, what details should they release about the uh, jurors? Uh, but I guess whatever is released, they're going to have to release it because if it's out there on Fox, like why shouldn't the New York Times talk about it, right? But it's... I think you have a right to talk about it, but it's weird to have a whole 
media enterprise that is basically an arm of the Trump campaign, like Fox. That's I mean, true. the Times is biased too, for sure. No question. But it's just not the same thing. I mean, I, well, I mean, one thing that was funny just talking about like news outfits debating things news outfits debating things i remember yeah. i heard somebody on on one of the networks saying that they were telling their reporters when trump supposedly like started to doze off they said they said don't say he fell asleep just say he like closed his eyes or was resting his eyes because you can't confirm uh, that he's actually sleeping right so <laughs> so but right. it was so funny that he fell asleep and then the whole uh, sleepy dawn became a uh, but yeah but but it is uh right he appeared to fall asleep is what i, uh, I kept saying. right so right i'm like I get, okay, you know, that's reasonable. But I, I, I think the evidence, too, that he fell asleep was that he was startled awake and that you don't just close your eyes and uh, be startled well, awake. Well, ap apparently he was resting his eyes or falling asleep today. <laughs> and oh, really? uh, And they interviewed a juror and he said that he watches Fox News and, like, Trump's eyes, like, opened up really wide. <laughs> <laughs> that stirred him. He woke up. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't remember other big trials knowing this much about the jurors until maybe after the trial was over, we heard more details about them. I don't well, know. Let's be frank. I mean, to be frank, I mean, the, the trials where the safety of the jurors is a big concern are the mob trials, right? Yeah, which is what this is. It really I mean, is. It really is. Uh, yeah, I don't think I could. I don't. I can't think of any trial where maybe the safety of the jurors is more important uh or or uh at risk uh, except like in um you know calabria mob trials or something <laughs> right uh, well your dad was involved with mob trials right, right he reported right. on them or he, he wrote was. about them he was yeah the westies well, we spoke about that once and probably have you talked have you talked about this trial with your dad yet you know, I haven't. I'll be I'll be curious to, oh, to talk yeah. to him. Yeah, I and wonder... let let me know what he says. I'm curious about his angle. Yeah, yeah. Well, do we know what? Because he he was at the federal courthouse. Is that no? Because so that's not where this is happening. This must be in the state, state Supreme Court. Okay, he, which is yeah. right next door. I think. Okay, in, in downtown Manhattan. <laughs> uh, cool. Law and order. Now uh, the. The big, I mean, the one thing I don't. Did you want to add something? Uh, I had another uh, thing, but what what were you about to say? I was gonna go big picture with. Let's do it with something. I I just think I remember the first time Trump started talking about how elections are rigged. Yeah. Way 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 back, and I don't. I didn't notice that other people got chills or were like freaked out by that. Mm. But apart from the legal aspect of all of this and whether what he does is legal or illegal, the idea of disparaging the election system, yeah. the legal system, the jury system, just like the repetition of this thing is bullshit, that like a trial in our system in America is bullshit, to say that over and over to people, that's... That's worse than anything, because democracy is all about everybody has to be participants in democracy or it doesn't work. And for him to essentially broadcast to his people and to everybody that that there's no way he can get a fair trial, it's the most fucked up shit. And it's going to it's think of all the tr all the defendants that are not Trump that are going to be like, oh, Trump kept saying this the jury is fucked up and they're biased like so mine must be too it's just gonna fuck a lot of shit up like why why does he do that he's so selfish yeah yeah it's fun. yeah because i think I, I was just listening to this book uh it, and it was about they were talking about the success of um some um, Italian city states like Genoa and Venice, as opposed to all other places in the area. This is like, I don't know, in the 1100s or 1300s or something. And uh, a part of it was they had the sort of feeling of democracy to them. 
And so people sort of understood to an extent and felt that they had a voice in things, even if, uh, you know, it, it wasn't quite that way. It was uh, there still, but there were levers to make it feel that way. And that created a, just a, a much more fruitful society uh, that was happier. And that also did, you know, uh, wealthier and also just created a lot of wonderful things. And, and so you do that and you really make people feel like they are... Uh, you know, uh, under the thumb of of this government, uh, and it, it hurts things a lot. Yeah, yeah. For, uh, on every level, even the people in government themselves. I mean, think of. I mean, you look at what happened, and the Republicans were so critical of what the left. I hate to say that word. It's so yeah. like. Whatever, but it's a good, but, I, I never know, yeah, it's a but, sort of all-encompassing word, but you yeah, can't, yeah, go ahead. There's no other way to say it, uh, but but what they did with, you know, the Black Lives Matter and the police and disparaging the police, and the Republicans were furious yeah. at disparaging the police. And whatever you think about the police, whether you like them or not, y- you know, it is just just shitting on one one aspect of government i i agree that there's some fucked up cops and cops do shitty stuff and it there may be a problem with the whole system if you look at it but i but i do think that like there's probably productive ways to change the system i don't know yeah. maybe not right. maybe you have well, to shit on on institutions but to shit on the court system the republicans were pissed at black lives matter and the police being disparaged but they're par- but yeah. but but if the courts are shat on by trump or or the elections they're fine with that i mean what the fuck it's so hypocritical it really is i mean well that never stopped him before you're right though like just you know that denigration of the entire system uh rather than a, a sort of more targeted critique which i would say uh to some extent a lot of the black lives matter supporters were doing although uh, I think some were also like, you know, doing like just uh, to fund the police, like no more police ever, uh, which I, I could understand. But that was such a tiny minority of people. And That's it wasn't, true. And it wasn't the president, you know, certainly like, yeah, Joe, Joe Biden wasn't out there saying that, you know, it was some uh, and it's fine if some, uh, you know, uh, people uh, or even some Congress people or something. It's just different when you have these huge uh, leaders of the party saying stuff like the whole system is rigged. It's yeah. it's dangerous. It's dangerous. The uh, the morale, you know, it just kills the morale. I'm sure people in government, when when people are shouting, important people are shouting that government sucks, yeah. or like when Reagan was shitting on the FAA. Like, imagine if you're like working in the you know making sure there are no planes crashing, and he's like bashing you what it must do to your psyche i know and yet i feel like government workers would go and vote for people that did that and it's like that do you have no faith in what you're doing no belief in what you're doing that that you're working hard and deserve to be paid what right uh, you know it's probably again one of those things well well i deserve to be paid but you know nobody else Right. I mean, it is weird how, like, the Army, the CIA, the FBI have a lot of people, a lot of members that vote for Trump. But he, he like, villainizes all those, like, all those uh, whatever organizations, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, what do you think about this juror who I think is the foreperson, at least last I, I heard, unless they changed it. Uh, he's an Irish guy, an immigrant. Born in uh, Ireland. Born in Ireland. Lives in Harlem. uh, Likes to get outside and exercise. Uh, I don't know if they said what he does for a living. Do you remember? He said, and he called Trump mysterious, right? Yeah, or was that the Puerto Rican guy who said, I forget. Oh, oh, that was, we just heard that, yeah. But I think it, but he said, he said something to that effect that was not, maybe not as laudatory as mysterious. Uh, which seems like a compliment to me. Um, but think, anyway, it just, I, I'm like, well, who's this guy who's got like, what, what's his deal? How is, uh, what do immigrants think of Trump? 
I think it's impossible to know by that description, but I think right. Trump probably was cool with him because Trump's yeah. parents were from where? Ireland or Scotland? One of them was from I, I think Scotland. or England maybe. Um, so I think Trump or German. Must have, I think he's German and I think it must have been his I think half maybe one of them was from Germany. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But I have a feeling this guy was was one of the people that the defense I mean yeah, maybe the defense was into this guy. Yeah. Well, you and know, he's once, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Who knows? One stat I remember from the 2016 election was that Trump lost Manhattan by 90 percent, which wow. is just insane. You know, his home, his home. Uh, yeah. So, so, but you know, as his for, uh, Jesse former Waters, home. his former home, as Jesse Waters says, like he, the, there only needs to be one. It's like. Well, on either side, yeah, you have one to like scuttle the whole trial. Yeah, that's what they're hoping. Yeah, I, I mean, wonder if yeah. they will discover any type of subterfuge that went on with like someone encouraging people to actually try to penetrate the system. Uh, you mean in, in term? Oh, what do you mean? I just wonder if there was a movement to try to get somebody on this jury. Now I'm oh, sounding wow. like, like crazy, but yeah, right. Because that happens. It's too. It's too. It would seems like it would be too ambitious to actually do that. Yeah, with too many eyes on it. I I don't know. Yeah, it would also be just hard to pull off. I feel like Trump's people are such a bunch of bunglers. <laughs> totally, that's exactly the word. Uh, well, I, yeah. I guess we'll see. Do you think he can have a fair trial in uh, Manhattan? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I do. Th I, I mean, I think he'll... I still think he's probably going to get away with this and, and get off, uh, either on a technicality or there's going to there's gonna be a hung jury. Like, I think... Maybe there will be uh, a hung jury. I think there'll be a hung jury, like, very, very likely, or even just because people are scared, <laughs> you know? They don't... Right. Like, somebody doesn't want to convict him because they're scared. <laughs> and they're like, right, maybe. Right, right. So, uh, that's... Uh, so, that's not really a fair... A fair jur a fair trial. No. So, in that sense, No. no. Oh, well, I guess we'll see. It's going to be, what, eight weeks, I guess. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. Well, we'll Oof. have a lot to talk about. One thing they do have to get together is he, Trump has been complaining about a cold courtroom. So, wow, <laughs> that's he really is a victim. Oh, my gosh. What a I'd murder. i to see him with some mittens on and some, ah! some, ear, some earmuffs. Like, like Bernie Sanders? That like meme? Bernie. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Oh, that was a good one. Mm. Oh. All right. Well, I think it's time to wrap. I I feel like uh, this is I you know wasn't sure how much there was to talk about jurors, but I think there there is a lot of uh, fodder here. So it's, oh, gosh, it's fascinating. Yeah. I mean, it's fascinating. Uh, we, could, we could go into discussing more, but I think I think this was good. <laughs> I'm sure we will, and um, and we'll have a great uh, weekend, Matt. Yeah, and have a good uh, one. and also to all the. Uh, listeners out there have a good weekend and we will see you next time thanks for listening